48 hours ago, we found something quite remarkable. What'd they find? There's a structure. In Antarctica? And a specimen. Really? Touching down. The Antarctic gets another taste of outer space once again in this prequel to the science fiction classic. Hello there to everyone in cyberspace, and thank you for tuning in once again to RealScreenReviews.com. I am movie critic Nick Yakabuchi, and our next movie review is the newest rendition of the movie, The Thing. This outworldly thriller opened around the United States on Friday, October 14th, 2011, and it features Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Joel Egerton, Jonathan Walker, and another actor whose name is so difficult to pronounce that I'm not even going to try it. This latest version of The Thing comes to us from director Mathis Van Hennigan, the director of the previous short films Zine and Red Rain. He now takes his first crack at a Hollywood studio film and will try to entertain as well as terrify multiplexes across the country. Now this newest rendition, is it a remake or is it a sequel? Do you have to see the others in order to understand this one? Well, I'll just quote the screenwriter of the project, Ronald Moore, who sums it up perfectly. He says, well, it's not a remake, it's really a companion piece to the John Carpenter version. They are telling the story of the Norwegian camp that found the thing before the Kurt Russell group did, so it's very buried in the continuity and is supposed to be the other story that you saw part of. So they didn't want to reinvent it, it's really much the opposite. We really wanted to have this flow seamlessly into what John Carpenter's did. Long story short, Researchers discover an alien life form in the frigid climate, and soon a struggle to survive then ensues. Well, people, the biggest compliment that I can pay this newest installment of The Thing is how wonderfully they connect the dots from this film to the already existing 1982 John Carpenter classic. Never in my life can I remember a movie so accurately and specifically not paying a tribute, but just being smart enough to have one movie lead into the next. I rewatched the previous version just a few days ago, and one of the best characteristics of this new one is how it captures the look and feel of the last one. They actually take individual shots from its predecessor and add detailed explanations to said scenes and also intelligently expand on the premise of the earlier film. Once again, this creature feature, just like Jurassic Park, hinges on the flaw of human arrogance. Now I know that you wouldn't have a movie, and maybe it's just me, but if you don't know what it's capable of, and you don't know what it will do, or even what it is in the first place, why would you open it up? The humans involved are taken aback by the intelligence of the thing, and that's become it mimics not only physical appearance, but intellect as well. Now 30 years of the evolution of Hollywood special effects have given credence to many new aspects and abilities of the creature, not to mention that it looked very credible. The plot was also anything but weak, with the monster not being able to imitate inorganic material, and even their test to determine whether or not you have been infected was so simple that it was actually brilliant. Now one big issue that I did have with this film is that they came to the same realizations, conclusions, and even ideas on how to fight and survive this enemy. I totally understand that it's supposed to take place in the same surroundings, but some of the story felt like an out-and-out -out copy of its predecessor. I also felt like some of the performances were dialed in or fell on the side of being lacking, but all in all, most came in well above average. For a very credible horror film, the thing still manages to have scenes of sympathy for some and scenes of humanity for others. In addition to the blood and gore, it also gives you the underlying storyline of Agatha Christie's Ten Little Indians. As the film plays out, you have characters turning on one another, and in the words of the original Joker, Jack Nicholson, hubba hubba hubba, money money money, who do you trust? Now my shout out for this uh, video goes to another YouTube channel that is brand new. They are RC Plain Reviews 1 and could really use anyone's help in getting things started. They are a great bunch of guys that are all about remote control planes and have some really good stuff depicting all forms of fun in the air. Please give this newest YouTube channel a boost by visiting RC Plane Reviews 1. Now at 1 hour and 45 minutes, the only portion of the thing that even felt remotely forced was the exploration of the spacecraft right near the end of the film. There are many moments of genuine suspense and terror and it held my attention throughout. Be forewarned that it is very bloody and very gory and if that's not your bag I would tell you to steer clear of this movie altogether. However, I found it highly entertaining, and it couldn't have arrived any better than right now, two weeks prior to Halloween. 
I was very torn between two and a half and three stars when I was leaving the three theater, excuse me, and after listing out the positive and the negatives, it actually became quite clear. I'll gladly give the thing a more than favorable three stars out of four, and remember people, I'm not always right, but only when it comes to the movies, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>